Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly, and you're gonna say hi, John. Hi, hi, Mr. Folly. And Mrs. Folly. So we're gonna do types of reactions all the way to the end. So um, we're gonna look a little bit about acids and base reactions. So um, acid-base reactions where a proton H positive is transferred. The H giver is the acid. The H receiver is the base. Okay. So basically, hi, hello, I'm an acid, and I give you an H. Oh, I'm a base, and I receive an H. Okay. OH is not seen as often as NXL. So here, this is going to be my acid. This is going to be my base. So if my acid gives an H, I'm going to end up with Cl left over, oh, and an H3O positive. Okay. If I have NH3 and H2O, uh-oh, water is going to be the acid this time. Okay. So remember, things that start with H tend to be acids. I know water can be both. It's called amphiprotic, which I'm sure that's going to pop up here later in a minute. Amphiprotic protic is an acid and a base at times. Right? Remember, an acid is an H giver. The base is an H receiver. NH3 is my base. It's my acid. So I get NH4 positive plus Cl negative. So ions are okay to have, which is what I just want you to get used to. H4 positive plus OH negative. All right. So um, I have acetic acid <clears throat> with water. And you should know in acetic acid, if I have something that is OOH, so you often see this as CH3COOH, this is the H that comes off. Okay, which it shows right here. Um, and there you go. Don't worry about these yet. They mean, they mean you have something to look forward to next semester. When I have CH3 NH2, this part right here, whoops, this part right here is going to be an H acceptor. So it's going to turn into CH3 NH3 positive. See how it's accepting that H plus OH negative. Acids are weak or strong, and we have talked about that. Um, weak acids are ionic compounds that start with H. We talked about that, or they end, or we have this as our H, this as our H, the OH and the COOH. Okay. Um, so on this one, we talk about something being polyprotic. Only one um, H comes off. Okay. The strength is due to the size of the electronegativity difference between H and what it's attached to. So this is very polar. This is very nonpolar. Okay. So polar, acidic, meaning it goes away. Nonpolar, no reaction. All right. Bases are weak or strong. Strong bases are group one and two hydroxides. Weak bases accept H's, so do strong acid, uh, ah, bases, I suppose. Most weak bases end in NH2. Boop, boop, boop. And what they do is they turn into the same thing. Um, I guess this is missing parts of it. Ah, I put an H when I didn't mean to. So this guy right here, looks like he's missing an H. Looks like all these friends are missing H's. Um. But this guy right here is then NH2, and he turns into NH3 positive. I'll let that stay there. Good. So it doesn't. Conjugate acid base pairs. Note these are double arrows. That means the reaction is reversible. Um, so we're dealing with weak acids and bases. Not that they're particularly weak, they're just not strong, okay? So the acid is the H giver. The base is the H positive taker, okay? And then the conjugate acid is the H positive giver in reverse reaction. And the conjugate base is the H positive taker in reverse. Reaction. Okay, so going this way, H gives an H here, right? NH3 receives it. That makes me NH4. 
and that leaves me with OH negative. Okay. Now in the reverse reaction, dun, 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 reverse reaction, NH4 is the conjugate acid. Acids give H's. If it gives up its H positive, it becomes NH3. And if this receives an H positive, it becomes H2O. So that's kind of what you're looking at there. Strength of acids and bases can be found by telling what side is favored. Okay, so the best acid gives H positives more. Okay, so which acid is the best giver or the strongest? So if this is my acid, and notice this arrow means that this would be 90%. I'm just making up numbers here, and 10%. So in this case, this is a better acid. And this is a, my conjugate acid here is a worse acid. Okay? And that's just all you do. The ferrate side is favored, stronger. The acid is stronger than the conjugate acid. And the base is stronger than the conjugate base. If the left side is favored, the reverse reaction happens. Label each uh, reactant as a product, end product as an acid, base, conjugate acid, or conjugate base. Okay, so here... First thing I see here is I see an OH, I see a COOH. Remember this joint is a carbon? So I see this. So I'm expecting this to be an acid. If it's an acid, it'll split right here, and that H is going to go right on here. Okay. So I'm going to look for F3C, F3C, this guy right here where he lost the OH. So that means this is my acid, and it turned into this guy. This is my base because it received it, right? CH3, H3C. This is my base, okay? So my acid, some people like this, my acid turns into my conjugate base, and my base turns into my conjugate acid, okay? And in the reverse reaction, you can see which one's a giver and which one's a taker, all right? Same deal here. This guy is going to be a giver. That's an A acid. This one right here, the OH, if I just focus on OH negative, that's going to be my base. That's going to be my taker. Okay. Sodium, psh, you do nothing. I wish I could just get rid. Oh, I just did get rid of you. How about that? Okay. So over here, notice how this has a negative charge. This is going to be my conjugate base. And this is going to be my conjugate acid. Most of the time, negative charges are going to be H positive acceptors. What is the strongest base in the first reaction? <laughs> what is the strongest base? Do we have arrows that show which one's better? We don't. Oh, the left side is favored in the first reaction. And the left side is favored in the second reaction. So this left side is favored. So since the left side is favored, let me draw my arrows to emphasize that's what I'm looking at. And then the left side is favored here too. All right. So that means that um, what's the strongest base? The strongest base would be the conjugate base. Conjugate base. What's the strongest acid in the second reaction? The conjugate acid. So if the left side is favored, that means, you know, whatever side is good does its job and pushes it to the other side. So all I'm saying is this again. If the right side is favored, the acid is stronger than the conjugate acid and the base is stronger than the conjugate base. Redox reactions. Okay, so these are kind of tricky. Electron is transferred many times, more than one. It's identified by a change in the oxidation number. Both oxidation and reduction must occur, and they do. It's not like they must and there's going to be some freaky time you're looking for it. They do. They occur at the same time. One thing gains electrons, the other side loses electrons. So if you lose an electron, it goes to the one that gained it. Not that crazy. Elements have an oxidation number of zero in their standard state. Now, of course, something like sodium, just regular old sodium, is going to have an oxidation number of zero, um, just like iron. But the weird ones like the diatomics and the tetraatomics, those are zero as well. Oxygen is negative two in compounds, except rarely seen as O2 negative two, where it's negative one. H is plus one in compounds, except rarely seen as NaH, where it is minus one. All right. Combustion is a, a common redox reaction. Um, it makes the most common oxide of the reactant. So combustion means make the most common oxide. Carbon's most common oxide is CO2. Hydrogen's most common oxide is H2O. Magnesium, ooh, I wonder what its most common oxide is. I'm just going to use the charges to figure it out. Oh, M-G-O. 
and then I should erase this. I'm going to leave it up there for this moment. Okay. Incomplete combustion with a product of CO and H2O occur when O2 is limited. Okay. Um, carbon monoxide detectors are in the school and probably your house. Um, if there's not enough oxygen, you get carbon monoxide, which causes um, breathing problems. And if you say, that's not balanced, you're right. Balance it yourself. All right. Precipitation. Review. Two aqueous solutions combine to form a precipitate. Oh. Net ionic reactions are often requested, and I prefer them. They're my favorite. You can cancel things. Familiarize yourself with the solubility rules. Those are always soluble. Cancel right away. Okay. Except for NH4 that sticks around. NH4H is aqueous but written together. And AGCL and BASO4 are very common precipitates. Okay. So... Oxidation is loss of electrons. We've done this a, a couple of times, mentioned it. The charge goes up, okay? It becomes more positive or less negative. So I could have S negative six turns into S negative four plus two electrons, or Na turns into Na plus one plus one electron. Half reactions shown above include, include the electrons on the right and the charge is balanced. Okay, so in oxidation, they're on the right, okay? Because the elect this guy lost an electron. See, they're over there. Reduction is gain of electrons. The charge goes down. It's less positive or more negative. Okay. Um, writing half reactions. And we're going to do a handful of samples of this. Um, redox reactions are frequently broken into parts. This will be done for you in AP chemistry. One step will be the oxidation part, where electrons are products. Another step will be the reduction part, electrons are reactants. Remember how we need both, right? And it'll always be both. Polyatomic ions often change during the process. And you'll see that. You see a lot of um, we did this with a couple of our titrations where we had C2O4 negative 2 turned into CO2, right? Many D block metals are in those ions, so there's a color change. So, for example, Fe3 plus turns into Fe2 plus. All right. Then we're going to have to balance some of these. <coughs> yeah, to balance an acid, we balance the element changing charge. We're going to add water to balance the oxygens. We're going to add H positive to balance the H's. Um, and then add electrons to balance the charge, combine and cancel. So let's take a look. We're going to balance this in acid. So to balance, these were centered a while ago, to balance the element changing charge. So see how I've already done that part? Add water to balance the oxygens. So CR2, this is written down wrong. I'm going to scribble this bad boy out because I'm pretty sure it's wrong. CR2, O7, negative 2. Turn the CR plus 3. I'm going to balance that in acid. First thing I'm going to do is balance the thingy's change in charge and make my pen a little smaller. Next thing I'm doing is going to balance my oxygens by adding water. Seven H2Os. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is balance my hydrogens. I'm in acid, right? So I can add H positive. Seven times two is 14 H positive. So again, what did I do? Balanced my thing changing charge. Needs two chromiums on both sides. Balance my oxygens. I have seven by adding water. Seven waters give me seven oxygens. That then gives me 14 hydrogens. I'm in acid, so H positive is a plenty. Now I need to check the charge. This side is plus 14, minus two, so this is plus 12. This side over here is plus six. Okay. I need to make the charges equal, so I need to add electrons to this side until plus 12 equals plus six. Six electrons. Done. Okay. Ah. Then I'm gonna be given this guy. HNO2 turns into NO3. My ends, I'm gonna write it here in the middle again. HNO2 turns into NO. Man, I have some serious typo-y things here. NO3 negative, okay. My ends are good, ch 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 check. Oxygens, I need another oxygen over here, H2O. Now I need to balance my hydrogens. One, two, three, I need three H positives. Okay, so this side is plus three, pa -pa. minus one, pa -pa. it's plus two, and over here it's zero. So I need to add two electrons over here. Notice electrons are on one side and they're on the other. Now I'm going to combine them. Now notice this is six and this is two. So 
I need to balance these by multiplying this entire thing by three. So that means I'm going to have three waters, three nitrous acids, three nitrates, bump, 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 nine, bump, 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 six. Okay. So when I do that, I hope you can see this water is going to change it down to four. These 14 H's are going to bump down to five. So let's take a look. My total is going to be five H positives, and the order doesn't matter at all. Plus Cr207 negative two. Plus, notice I'm doing everything on the left hand side. Three HNO2 yields two chromium plus three, plus four H2O, plus three NO3 negatives, all the way canceled down. And then notice how I left the electrons out. So those cancel out. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. All right. A simpler one. Um, Cu turns into Cu plus 2. Everything's balanced. No oxygens, no nitrogens. I just throw two electrons. Over here, I have two Ag positives plus, dumb that, plus. Yields two Ag. Notice how I try and keep my arrows lined up. I'm not the neatest chap with my handwriting and such, but when I line something up pretty seriously, there's a reason for it. It makes it a lot easier. This side is plus two, so we need two electrons over here. See how these guys cancel out? Right away, I don't have to multiply by anything. So my total is copper plus two Ag positive yields copper plus two plus Ag. Um, this would be plating silver. Plating means a solid comes from solution. That right there is solution. This right here is solid silver. Good, good, good. Balancing in base, last thing we have. Balance the thing changing charge, that was the same. This is weird. Balance the O's by adding twice the hydroxides you need. That's weird, but it works. And balance the H's by adding H2O. So good, these are my centered ones that I was looking for before. So balance the thing changing charge. Two silvers, two silvers, right? Balance the O's by adding, I'm gonna get rid of this for right now. Oh, you know what, I can do one. Oh, watch my miracle right here. Ooh, you think you're smart? No, I'm smart. No, I'm smart. No, but I'm colorblind, I probably picked the wrong red. Hope that's the same one. Um, so here, I'm going to balance the O's by adding twice the hydroxides that I need. So right now, I need one hydroxide, so I'm going to put two OH negatives, okay? And I'm going to balance the H's by adding H2O. Here's two H's, right? So I'm going to add one H2O, okay? So this gives me two oxygens and two oxygens, two hydrogens, two hydrogens, okay? Um, now I got to do the charge just like before. Um, this side is negative two. This is zero. This is zero. This is zero. So that means I have to add two electrons over here. Okay. This side, welcome to bad formatting. Zn2 plus yields zinc. Okay. Now everything's balanced on that one. So I'm just going to put two electrons over here. To combine these parts, see where it says total. I'm going to add both parts up. These cancel. And I'm going to get two hydroxide plus two silver, uh, plus zinc plus two, yields Ag2O plus H2O plus zinc. So again, splitting it down the middle, do the ones on top first, the ones on the bottom second. That's it. And we're all done. Woo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. Wish it was shorter, but it's not. Talk to you tomorrow. Toodles. Whoa.